Now I want to make like a different, to, to come up with a different angle and to ask what is the mathematical basis of this very nice question. And this is something that we do many times when we try to uh, match algorithm to a problem and it is to quantify the problem. And again, because this is a, a something that is very computational, it is colored in blue. Okay, so first question. What is the number of groups? I'm now going to numbers, to mathematics. What is the number of groups? So here, let's say that all the dots that you see here are the um, patients, in let, let's say in a two-dimensional uh, uh, um, plot. Uh, how many groups do you see here? How many groups do you see here? Six. How many? What? Six. Six? Maybe two. Four. Or six. Or four. Or two. <laughs> okay. So this is a question actually that we cannot answer. There is no answer to this question. Because what we ask the computer to do is to come up with clusters so that the intra-cluster distances are minimized and the inter-cluster distances are maximized. I didn't say, oh, and I don't know, what is the correct number of groups. And of course, if I choose more groups, then the inter-cluster, the intra-cluster distances will be smaller. So how do I uh, make a decision? in this uh, trade-off. Do you know? It depends on the biological question. It depends on the biological question. That is very true. So everything we do, especially in medical data mining, is, has like two arms, the, the data science arm and the biological arm. So that's very true. So if I know, if I have some kind of knowledge about that, definitely I will put that knowledge in. Many times I don't have that <laughs> knowledge. And when we say unsupervised machine learning, maybe I, I should have uh, explained that earlier. Unsupervised means that I have like no supervision. I have no one that tells me a priori what is the correct, or give me some kind of a priori, a priori knowledge or some kind of examples or things like that. I don't have it. So I don't know the number of groups. Another uh, thing, another question when we now take that nice goal of clustering into reality. When I say the inter-cluster distances are like this and the intra-cluster distances are like that, what is the distance? What is the distance? What is the distance between me and you in, in our blood samples? What is the distance? So there are many ways to quantify the distance. Here we will look at the simplest way. It's called Euclidean distance, after Euclidus. And the idea is that we take, for each dimension, like each variable, we take uh, the difference between the two patients uh, to the power of 2. So we, we say 150 minus 142, that's 8, squared, so 16. And here it is 6.5, 3.7, we do the difference, squared, and so on. So this is the formula. It's said the distance between patient P and patient Q equals, by the way, to the distance between patient Q to the patient P. All right, it's, uh, there's no direction here. And it's P1, uh, Q1 minus P1 squared plus uh, Q2 minus P2 squared plus Q3 minus P3 squared and so on. And we take the root from this number, so the formula is like this, sigma of qi minus pi squared, and we take the root. So this is the Euclidean distance. Many times it is customary to divide everything by the number of patients or by the number of items. 
So just not just taking the sum and taking the root, but also dividing it to the number of patients. That means that you like do an average if, if you think about it. But it has no actual um, importance because we just divide everything with in in a with a constant. But it doesn't take yes. into account the scale of each parameter. So the exactly. The is 140 and you can have something that is 0 0.2. You are absolutely correct. What's your name? Again, it's the same. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you are absolutely right. Uh, this is like the numbers here are in the hundreds and here are the numbers are in, in a, a different scale two times smaller and you're absolutely right. So we will need to use more sophisticated and we will use more sophisticated formula in the future but just for now, just for now, uh, we will uh, use the Euclidean distance and I totally agree. And uh, you know there is another criteria or criterion. What about the fact that ALT for example if we are talking about liver diseases is more important than white blood cells? So maybe you, you want also to give that dimension a higher power. So I totally agree. Or if you want something to be high or something else to be low, it's good. Also exactly. OK, oh, good. So you see, you can see how, as, as system engineers, you can manipulate the algorithms to do what you need them to do. OK, let's say now we use just the Euclidean distance. And we say, OK, for example, the number between patient number 2 and patient number 5 is 53.94. And the uh, uh, distance between patient number 5 and patient number 10 is 11. So patient 5 and 10 are much closer to each other than patient 5 and 2. Very good. And in this case, we can do all these measurements. So we say, what is the difference, what is the distance between all patients to all patients? OK? So we do this kind of a matrix or a, a, a half matrix, right? Because it's transitive. And then we find all the distances. It still doesn't mean that we have clustering. Right? Clustering is another problem. This is a suggested clustering, right? So let's say if this is one group, this is another group, this is a third group, we can measure the intra-cluster distances and the inter-cluster distances. And we will have numbers for that. But if we move that patient to this group, so we do another clustering, then again, we will have different numbers for intracluster distances and intercluster <coughs> distances. And if we move this uh, patient again, we have two different numbers again. OK? So when we try to think about algorithms, first thing is to quantify, to put them into numbers and see what we can make out of it. Let's try to do that. And we use the letters for the parameters. So n is the number of points, data points in our problem. Let's say in this case, patients. So n is the number of patients. D is the number of attributes, the different variables that you have, or the different dimensions that we, we have. And k is the number of clusters, OK? Because the rest of what I'm going to do needs to know how many clusters we have. And many times uh, we use k when we don't know a certain uh, parameter, we say k. It reminds me the joke, I don't know if you know, about um, the chemist, the physicist, and the mathematician that uh, um, they sailed and their ship uh, erupted and uh, they found themselves in an isolated uh, um, island. Have you heard about it? And they only had a can. So they had no food, just a can. But they didn't have the can opener. OK, so the chemist said, ah, that's not a problem. I will put the can in the water, pull it out to the sun, and then put it the water again, and the sun again, and the water again. The sun. Ah, as time goes by, there will be rust. And that rust will enable us just to put the can, to open the can. 
But then they said, you know, it will take time, we will starve to death. So the uh, physicist said, okay, I will take my glasses, my thick glasses, and I will concentrate the light from the sun, and l very easily I will be able to melt the can. But then they said, okay, but uh, we will have night and there are clouds, it's winter, so we will not have much sun, we will starve to death. And then said the mathematician, you know what? What is the problem? We don't have a can opener? Let's assume we have a can opener. And this, yeah. <laughs> and this is what we say. We don't know the number of groups. Let's assume we know the number of groups. Let's assume it's K. And I'm serious about it. When, I mean, many times when we develop algorithms, we don't know the whole picture. We don't have the, info, the, the whole information. But we will break this challenge into tinier pieces by assuming that we do know some of the information. So let's say that we do know the number of uh, clusters, and the number of clusters is what? Two, three, five, eight? Two uh, power n minus one. No, the number of clusters. K. K. Okay. K. That's the joker, okay? That's, all, that's the ass, right? K. K is the correct number. Okay, if k is 2, that's the simplest way. If the number of clusters is only 2, so we need to divide all patients into just two clusters, how many clustering options do we have? 2 power n minus 1, if I'm not wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Your name again? Benny, it's not again, it's the first time. First time? Okay. <laughs> Benny. Uh, Benny Benjamin? Ah, I see, I, I know from the Excel sheets. Okay, <laughs> from the data. So, uh, yes, Benny is right. So the number of clustering options is 2 to the power of n. Actually, to the power of n minus 1. And that's more correct. But now let's see why. For each patient, we need to make a decision whether this patient goes to cluster number one or to cluster number two. So for patient number one, we have two options. For patient number two, again, we have two options to go to number one or to number two. So two times two. For patient number three, again, two options. So two times two times two. And so forth for all n patients. So it's two to the power of n, or actually, to the p to the power of n minus one. Why, by the way? Because for the last one, one you have. Uh, no, the first one. So there are two different ways to look at it. Even that the the first one is it doesn't care. So okay. it is we just we don't call the groups group A and group B. We say just this is the group of patient number one, and this is the group of not patient number one. Or that we can understand that the two groups can switch. Okay, so different ways to interpret it, but it means that the number of clustering option is two to the power of n minus one. So if we have one thousand patients, is two to the power of nine ni of uh, nine hundred ninety-nine. Okay. In computer science, we annotate that. We say it doesn't matter for us that it is n minus one. We look at the scale. So we say it's a scale of 2 to the power of n. And we annotate it with this letter big O, capital O. So this is the scale of that problem. So the number of clustering options, tachless, is 2 to the power of n. OK, what are the intra a, or what is the number of computations, of calculations that we need to do to calculate the intra-cluster distances. So it is, if you think about it, it's the number of pairs in one cluster, okay, that we need to check all the distances of all the pairs. And let's look at the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is if we have all patients in one group, so there's n patients in one group. So it actually, number of pairs in one cluster is n minus 1 squared, right? Because it's everybody with everybody, all the pairs. And then again, it's O, big O, of n squared. And 
we multiply that by the number of attributes, the number of variables. And the number of variables, as you saw in the beginning, it's uh, d. And we need, of course, to multiply the two. So it's o of d times o of n squared. Now, I say, mm hmm, OK. I need to think what it means mathematically. So I will stop the, this vertical topic here. And I will start a horizontal topic to look at it in a very zoom-in way. And that is the topic of complexity and computability. Wow.